All right, good morning, everybody. I'm just gonna give a few minutes for everybody to get on here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, thank you guys for joining me this morning. Uh, this morning I was in my, I got into the Word a little bit this morning. Uh, I try to do that. Um, it's a good thing to get into the Word first thing in the morning. I know the enemy will try to get you busy uh, with distractions and everything else to keep you out of the Word first thing in the morning. Good morning, guys. Thank you for joining me this morning. Um, I got an interesting word this morning. I think it's going to be a blessing to some people. Hey, guys, um, this is out of John chapter 3. Again, if you uh, if you have your Bible with you, you join me. If not, that's okay. It doesn't, it doesn't matter too much, but I'll give you the word. Here, I'll read it to you. This is, again, this is John chapter 3. Uh, it says, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. And this man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. Uh, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. In verse three, it says, Jesus answered and said unto him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, really, I want to home in on verse three. It says, most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That word see there uh, comes from a word meaning to perceive. And I'm going to give you some of the uh, the deeper understandings of this word see. And then we're going to I'm going to talk about that for just a minute. Uh, the word see means to perceive with the eyes, perceive by any means of the senses, to notice, to discern and to discover, to turn the eyes, mind, and attention to something or to anything. Again, so it gives you a deeper understanding of this word see. So obviously the practical understanding of this word, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. We know that uh, and let, Jesus is telling him that unless you are born again, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. No man can, uh, flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God. It has to be through a renewal of the spirit or a born again experience. So uh, we know that from a practical, that's very elementary guys. Most of you already know that it's an elementary principle uh, in serving God. But I'm going to peel back a, a deeper layer of this this morning and show you something. He says, unless one is born again, he cannot perceive the kingdom of God. So I propose to you that, and I want to bring this right up front. Uh, the sinner has to be reborn, but the believer has to be transformed. Let me say that again. The sinner has to be reborn, but the believer has to be transformed. And I'm going to talk about that uh, for the next few moments. I'm going to take you to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Yes, exactly. That's why so many are blind today. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse three, but even if our gospel is veiled or hidden, it is veiled to those who are perishing. That's the lost whose minds, the God of this age, who is that Satan has blinded who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God should shine unto them. So again, uh, the gospel is hid or veiled to the, the those that are perishing, those that are lost, unless the light of the gospel should penetrate it. Again, the sinner has to be reborn. But now let me move over here to Romans 12, because I really do, I'm really not focusing so much, guys, this morning. Uh, I don't really want to plow too much on uh, the sinner being reborn, because again, that's elementary. But I really want to home in on the believer being transformed. Romans chapter 12, very familiar passage. Everybody should know this again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's, that in itself is deep, uh, being that Paul says that presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, is a reasonable service. And some of us can't even get that far. Come on, somebody. Verse two, here we go. And do not be conformed to this world. The word conform means to conform to another's pattern or fashion or culture. It would be as um, 
So whatever is fashionable in culture today, we conform ourselves to that image. We conform ourselves to that stream, to that, to that form. Okay. But the word of God says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. The word transform means to change into another form. Okay. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now you say, well, how is a believer transformed? Bottom line, since, since, uh, very uh, simple principle. Ready? Read the word of God. And you say, well, I was hoping for a deep revelation. Guys, um, I'm going to tell you right now, Christians don't read the Bible. And I can prove that because they would not be allowing the stuff that they allow to come into their spirit. They wouldn't be believing the stuff that they believe. They wouldn't be teaching the stuff they teach. They wouldn't allow people to preach behind the pulpit that preach. Come on, somebody. But the problem is we've got a lot of reborn sinners, but we have very few transformed believers. Okay? Again, we have many reborn sinners, but we have very few transformed believers okay now i'm gonna let me let me show you an example guys i got some notes here uh jesus told nicodemus if unless you're born again you'll by no means perceive the kingdom of heaven he says you will not any you'll by no means notice discern or discover the the kingdom have you ever wondered why you get around a bunch of christians and they want to argue about, listen, there's principles in the word. They want to argue about the principles in the laws of giving and receiving. They, they'll they argue with you about the perception of forgiveness and unforgiveness. They'll argue to, to, with you with the perception of humbling yourself. They'll argue with the perception of sanctification, holiness, and consecration. Why? Because they've not transformed themselves in the word of God. Listen. This is why you'll, you'll hear this all the time. All them preachers want is your money. And I don't understand why they always want to talk about money. But if they understood the principle of and the law of giving and receiving scriptures like Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given back into you, good measure, pressed down, shaken and running together. If they understood that God owns uh, the cattle on a thousand hills, the earth and the fullness thereof is his and the silver and gold is his, his. if they understood the principle of, uh, of, of the principle of the story of Jacob and when he made a covenant and a vow with God that he would begin to give him a tenth of all of his increase. The Bible says that all the days of Jacob's life, he was met with his provision. He was protected. The Bible says in Malachi chapter three, try me not herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, and see if, you, if you'll not bring your tithes into the storehouses and your offerings, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that you have not room enough to receive it. Paul said, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus our Lord. And he told that to the church of Philippi, which if you read that in the church of Philippians, he says uh, that you and you alone are the only church that shared with me giving and receiving. And he goes on and says that I did not come to seek the gift, but I came that you may receive the the fruit or the blessing of giving. Come on, it's in your Bible. But the problem is, again, Christians don't read the Bible. Therefore, they attack the principles of giving and receiving. I'm just using one example, guys. So the, the enemy has blinded them because they've not transformed their mind in the word of God. Number two, they don't understand the importance of forgiveness. The world says Revenge is is a is a dish best served uh, cold, right? Uh, it's revenge. If someone does this wrong, we retaliate. We bring revenge. But the but the kingdom's principle is vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The kingdom's principle is bless those who persecute you, persecute you, and pray for those who despitefully use you. Come on, that's the kingdom's principles. But the problem is, again, we're not transforming our mind. This is why, how can a, man, how can a Christian television network who with a self-proclaimed prophet get on television, the word network, and have a man get on their network who, who propagates racism, violence, who even made a statement 
to basically uh, kill a certain race. Come on, somebody. Why? There's no way in the world that a man would allow that to come on their program unless they had not been transformed by the word. Come on, somebody. I'm I, Listen, uh, it, it's the word whether you want to accept it or not. Number three, the, the, the world's mentality is climb the ladder, cut everybody else down, knock everybody down and get to the top. Do whatever you got to do to get to the top. You got to kill, you got to steal, you got to cheat. Come on, somebody, whatever you got to do. I'm going to quote one politician that said, what difference does it make, right? What difference does it make what we do? But the Bible says, humble yourselves. And he who humbles himself shall be exalted. He who humbles himself under the mighty hand of God shall be exalted in due season. He who is called least is uh, in this world is called the greatest in the kingdom. Some of the last shall be first and some of the first shall be last. Again, these are kingdom principles that I'm seeing Christians not perceiving because their mind has not been transformed. Guys, this I'm not talking about uh, sinners in this message. I'm talking about believers. OK, and then lastly, they don't perceive the need of sanctification and holiness because they're, they're not in the word. And the Bible says the washing of the word of God, cleansing them. Jesus said, if you know my word and my word is in you, you will be my disciples and you should know the truth and the truth will set you free. Listen, I'm going to turn. I'm going to go to first uh, Peter chapter four, first Peter chapter four. OK, let me go over here. Here we go. Ready? Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. That right there, I could just preach on that alone. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, rivalries, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. Listen to what Peter says. In regard to these things, they, who's they? Unregenerated uh, sinners, which need to be born again. But I'm going to take it a step farther. Untransformed believers as well. In regard to these, they think it's strange that you do not run with them in the same flood of dissipation speaking evil of you. Come on, somebody. But they will give an account to him who's ready to judge the living and the dead. Some of you, uh, you just need to get a whole group, of, a, do, a whole different group of friends because you've got a group of friends that call themselves Christians and believers. And because you want to live a life of consecration, sanctification, and holiness unto the Lord, they call you a Jesus freak. They call you fanatical. They call you radical. They call you over the top. But the Bible says in regard to these things, they will find it strange that you don't run in the same dissipation uh, uh, that they do. And they'll speak evil of you. Come on, we got Christians speaking evil of other Christians because you've got, there's a sep guys, there is a separation. Man, I feel the spirit of the Lord on me right now. There is a separation happening right now between the sheep and the goat and the wheat and the tear between Pastor Mark Casto uh, at OCI. He's been preaching on the difference between us and them. There's a separation between us and them. Find it not strange do you, that, that they speak evil of you because you don't run with them. Come on. I'd rather be, I'd rather you be with us than you run with them and miss and lose out. Paul said it like this. He said, what profit is it me for me to run this race and not finish my race? Therefore, the Bible says that he buffets himself. Or in other words, he brings himself in, into some subjection of the word of God. D come on. I'm going to say a nasty D word right here. Ready? Discipline. Come on. We've got to do whatever it takes, guys. I don't want to disqualify myself in the race. So again, sinners have to be reborn, but believers have to be transformed. So listen, I am not going to stop preaching the unadulterated 
word of God. I don't care how unpopular it gets. I don't care if uh, if I lose thousands of followers because, I, again, I will stand and give an account to him who's ready to judge the living and the dead. So, again, I hope this uh, I hope this is helping somebody. Listen, I had a note here when I got saved 15 years ago, guys, when I got saved 15 years ago, my spirit was reborn, but my mind has to be transformed. Golly. Again, when I gave myself to, to the Lord on the altar 15 years ago, my spirit man was reborn. But every single day, Paul said, I beseech you, therefore I die daily, not Sundays, not weekly, not during conferences. Come on. I die daily. I take up my cross, deny myself and follow after him daily. So my spirit man was reborn on June 2nd, 2000, but 15 years later, day by day, my uh, my mind is being transformed. Why? For, uh, for the carnal mind is enmity with the mind of God. So it has to be transformed. The natural mind receiveth not the things of God for they spiritually, they're, they're, they're not inclined to the spirit man, guys. So again, I hope this helps somebody uh, this morning, this was really burning in my spirit. So I immediately took notes uh, and I felt like this was a word that I needed to uh, release to the body right now. To those uh, who are uh, who are listening, those who have ears to hear, um, there is a separation process going on, guys. And I'm seeing it every day. I'm seeing goofy, ridiculous things that Christians are doing, falling into. And listen, you and I are no different. We're all... Uh, we're all prone to make these these foolish mistakes if we don't stay in him. Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. If any man abides in me, the same shall bear much fruit. And without me, without being connected to me, you'll bear nothing of yourself. You will wither up, guys. And the Bible says you'll be thrown into the fire. That's, that's the book of John. It talks about that. So again, I hope this has been a blessing to you today. Uh, I'll probably be back on later on tonight because, um, again, I've got some other word, uh, another word. Uh, I know some of y'all have been uh, wanting to hear that word that I had on uh, the uh, when I went back and looked over my notes. It was four sins of Sodom. And I said three, but the four sins that no one talks about in Sodom and Gomorrah um, and then some other ones as well. So thank you, guys, as always. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, do you ever meet with individuals requesting advice? Um, well, not in person. Uh, I mean, I have if they're here, uh, here in where I'm at in locality. Um, but I don't do it a lot. I'm not, honestly, guys, I'm not the best counselor. Um, be, uh, I guess because I'm a little bit more bold in some of my counseling. Um, you know, some people have more mercy and grace than others to do that. Uh, but I've never considered myself a counsel. I, you know, I can give you the whole counsel, which is the word of God, um, and based on my own experience, uh, but consider pronouns, not my life, his life, not my will, his will. So we are transformed, glory to glory. Amen. So, hey guys, God bless you again. If this is the first time you've tuned in to End Time Headlines, again, you can find uh, us at endtimeheadlines.org. That's our main website. Um Again, of course, you can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. And obviously share this if you'd like uh, to the right on iOS devices and swipe up on Apple device or uh, Android devices and share this. So again, thank you for your prayers, your support, and your giving to this ministry. God bless you guys. I pray the Lord bless you, keep you, and may his countenance shine upon you. And uh, I'll talk to you guys uh, later on this afternoon with either news, uh, updates, or a word that the Lord gives me to release. So uh, God bless you guys. I'll talk to you soon.